Did you punch a time clock when you left work tonight? That's the way most businesses keep track of their workers' hours, like here at KSLA. But tonight you're going to see what happens when a big company decides to throw out the time clock and rely on the honor system. That's only one of the many innovative ideas that the Sony Corporation of Japan has come up with to keep its workers happy. Tonight, PM Magazine's Richard Hart takes us to Japan for a close-up look at a company with some unusual working methods. out of the rubble of World War II in 1946, the company was still called Tokyo Telecommunications, and its first product was a rice cooker that didn't sell. Today, it's legendary for its innovation in electronics, and last year it did sell $2 billion worth of equipment. Why? Well, Sony claims its success comes from the way it treats its employees. It makes an effort to deliberately get involved in the employee's personal life. To the company, that employee is family. But don't confuse a Japanese employer saying the company is a family with an American employer, for example, saying everyone who works here is family. The Japanese employer tends to take it literally. These children here are in school in a place that began as a kindergarten originally for the children of employees of the Itsugi plant of the Sony Corporation. This kindergarten is on Sony soil, and Sony hired the teachers. Naturally, Sony hopes these kids will work for the company someday, but the idea goes beyond that. It's sort of that the salary and pension and welfare doesn't bring out the best in a person. Sony says if you want a person to be creative and innovative, make sure his family is happy too. This is housing provided by the Sony Corporation for about 600 of its single employees at Atsugi, the large video production center. It's not uncommon for Japanese companies to provide uh, off-campus housing for their employees, mostly dormitories. Sony is unique with these townhouses here, little individual units where four to five people can share living expenses. Those expenses aren't that great. Rent, including one meal a day, total costs come up to about $35 a month, all because of Sony. For example, in this unit, number 26, four women from all over Japan share living quarters. The company goes so far as to make sure that the roommates are personally compatible before putting them together. Now, some might argue that all this personal involvement makes the worker so dependent on the company that he or she can't afford to leave for any other job. But many of the employees who talked with us made it clear that they didn't intend to work for Sony for long. They just liked it for now. I'd like to know where they've lived before and how they compare living elsewhere with living here. あの、3人の方によく伺いしたんですが、前にここにいらしたとき、お家にいらしたときはどちらにいらしたんですか?それと向こうでの生活とこちらの生活というのはどうでしょうか?あのね、あの、共同生活や。Here it's she has to be more independent. When she lives with her parents, her mother cooks everything, take care of everything, and she, she did nothing. So you have to do housekeep, housekeeping and the cleaning and laundry and cooking and uh, uh, deal with uh, uh, community people, all by themselves. Two of the women who spoke with us were working afternoons so that they could take classes in the morning. And one of them was taking classes to become a kimono maker, something Sony isn't involved in. But Sony acknowledges that they won't be working for the company forever because it helps pay for even such non-job-related tuitions. There are other breaks for the workers. For example, the company has its own drug store where you can buy everything from coffee to cameras. And then there's the company cafeteria. One problem is, what do you do about lunch? For example, if my employer provided us a cafeteria where we could eat for free, and Jan did not eat lunch or ate very little, and I ate like it was going out of style, she'd be losing money. 
There's a possible solution at Sony. Every individual employee has one of these magnetically coated cards. He can put it into a machine, out pops 2,000 yen and lunch coupons, which he can use instead of cash. It's a mini cashless society, and these company ID cards are good at any plant and can also be used to purchase items at the little stores at the plants as well. We have to trust them as a good employee so that uh, in this factory uh, we uh, use an honor system. Our employees select uh, their dishes and uh, pay uh, by the coupon and the collection is 99%. Mm. That, uh, and also the 1% may be a human error, you know. Masahiko Morizono is a senior managing director of the Sony Corporation. He's won Emmy Awards for innovation in TV and is responsible for the video tape recorder system that makes this show possible. Uh, you know, no matter how we uh, say to our people, uh, you're going to be a creative, it doesn't work. So that, uh, you know, the, uh, we feel the most important things for us to do, uh, particularly as a management, is to give them uh, good circumstances where they can uh, freely think of uh, new things and so on. This is our basic, uh, you know, attitude. The system at Sony extends everywhere. There are no time cards to punch on the production line, for example. For the dreamers on Sony's staff, however, there is a punch card of sorts. The company is very goal-oriented. Almost no innovation has been an accidental discovery in the lab. It's almost as if they're told what they will invent. So far, they've met every target. What's in the future? Well, what about a television antenna like this on your roof? Sony says that within five years it will have operating a system that will allow you to buy a television receiver. It will pick up satellite transmissions for a few hundred dollars. It will be just a little bit smaller than this, and the number of stations you can pick up is limitless. Apparently so is Sony Vision. SLA engineers like Dwight Seiden do routine maintenance as well as major repairs on sophisticated Sony equipment. And here at Channel 12, like at Sony, the family spirit flourishes. Why, every now and then, our president and general manager, Winston Lynham, closes the offices at noon and we all have a barbecue on the patio. Chuck and I will be right back with more PM Magazine and a look at the rest of the week. Stay tuned now for lighthearted fun as the Peanuts Gang welcomes springtime by turning Charlie Brown's baseball field into a garden plot. It's Arbor Day, Charlie Brown, next on Channel 12.